You know what I love about Utica? Pretty much everything, actually. <laughs> Your coffee, second to none. Your beer, second to none. Some of those rye cocktails I may or may not have enjoyed over the years here, second to none. Your food, your history, your people, and now your amazing future. Um, I want you to know, because I know none of you actually don't already know, but I'm going to say this anyway. <laughs> We're here today to celebrate a very, very extraordinary milestone. We are here to formally announce that Cree, the global leader in silicon carbide technology, is here with us to announce their plans to build the world's largest silicon carbide device fab facility right here in Marcy, New York. <laughs> As exciting as that is, it may even be more exciting that I have a PowerPoint presentation. <laughs> <clears throat> but before I get into that, I want to make some special acknowledgments. First, I want to start with my good friend, former assembly member, Anthony Brindisi, Congressman Brindisi. <clears throat> Assembly members Marianne Buttonshawn <laughs> Is Ken Blankenbush here? <laughs> Brian Miller? <laughs> Robert Smullen? <laughs> Oneida County Executive Anthony Pacenti. Mayor of Utica, Rob Palmieri. <laughs> Mayor of Rome, Jackie Izzo. <laughs> Marcy Town Supervisor, Brian Scala. <laughs> SUNY Chancellor and a partner in all we do with respect to the semiconductor industry and other technologies. Christina Johnson. <laughs> SUNY Vice Chancellor and COO Robert Megna. <laughs> Co-chair of the Mohawk Valley REDC. He promised two years. He's now nine years into a two-year two term. Larry Gilroy. And um, I want to also, because this has been such a huge priority for ESD since um, from the time the governor invited us to really get involved uh, with SUNY in economic development for these types of um, large scale projects, I want to uh, take a moment and acknowledge uh, the amazing team. I have had the pleasure and privilege to serve as the governor's head of economic development for what was four and three quarter years. Uh, and now I'm, I'm privileged to continue on as chair. But I work with an amazing team at Empire State Development. I want you to know you have an amazing economic development agency here in the state and here in the Mohawk Valley region. And I want to recognize some of the folks who have worked tirelessly on this. Um, Kevin, I'm just going to list them off, and then maybe you can hold your applause. But I just want to mention some folks. Kevin Eunice, uh, Mike Reese. Mark Reynolds, Craig Alford, Jeff Januszewski. Um, they have done uh, an amazing job uh, here. Kevin Hansen uh, and so many others, they have done an amazing job. Uh, together, uh, we have literally traveled the globe 
uh, looking for a semiconductor fit for Marcy, and, and I'm not exaggerating. We've been to California, Austria, Texas, France, Israel. The list is long and wide, um, but they've done an amazing job. Uh, Mohawk Valley Edge CEO has been an amazing partner for us, Steve DeMeo. I'm gonna recognize Steve. <laughs> And Eric Gertler, who's the new CEO of Empire State Development, uh, he's been very gracious in allowing me to come back and do this. This is something I was working on for some years, and I really wanted to kind of tie up this loose end, if you will. But ESD has a new fabulous CEO in Eric Gertler. And uh, for those of you, some of you have met him already, some of you will meet him soon. But I'm extremely grateful uh, for um, his graciousness and his um, willingness to take the job. It's a, there's a lot of miles involved in this job and a lot, of her, a lot of hard work, but you have an extraordinarily qualified new head uh, of Empire State Development. Um, people have asked me over the years, um, why would you do a job like this? Uh, and I have worked with the governor now for literally nine years either as head of REDC in Buffalo and then as head of Empire State Development for the almost five years. Uh, and I haven't gotten paid much uh, in those nine years, some of you may know. Uh, and I get the question a lot, like why would you do something like that? And I wanna just tell you, because this may be the last time I have an opportunity to, to address you. Um, it's because in this job, you have the unusual opportunity to make a difference unlike uh, I was ever able to make in your own business. And private sector business, of, of course, keenly important. It's how we measure success. But when you have the opportunity to head economic development for a governor like this, you have the opportunity to paint on a canvas that's much larger and, and have an impact potentially that's much broader. I am a Buffalonian but I am, well, I've lived there for 38 years, but I'm also considering myself a Utican, a Rochesterian, an Albanian, a Syracusean. We've all lived the same life since, you know, for 50 years, okay? Buffalo was incorporated the same year Utica was incorporated. We parallel each other in the rise and fall and rise again of our communities. And it's an amazing opportunity to participate in that and experience it. And I do it because um, we have somebody in, and the decline, we're all tired of the decline, and the governor was tired of the decline. But in Governor Cuomo, we have somebody who, for the first time in as long as I can remember, made upstate New York his highest priority period, end of discussion. Every single city in upstate New York uh, was his highest priority. And that was the first time in a long time uh, when I was invited to participate, it was we are gonna do economic development 180 degrees uh, differently. And that was welcome news because it was always a bizarre spectator sport. You never knew why something happened or why something didn't. But his approach, comprehensive, regional, uh, bottom up, has made a huge difference. You take ownership in your own economic future, he gives you responsibility for directing the state resources, for goodness sake. So you develop your own plan, and then you fund projects that align with your plan. It has been uh, an amazing uh, sea change, as far as I'm concerned, for every region that I've seen across the state. So that really was the opportunity. When you have leadership like that, when you have a governor like that, you need a governor to take the lead in saying upstate's gonna be my highest priority. You may know that much of the assembly, not all of it, you've got great advocates here, much of the assembly, much of the Senate is downstate focused. You need a governor to say, this is our highest priority. And that's what you have. That's what we've had in Buffalo. That's what we've had in Utica. That's what we've had all across uh, the state. So I wanna tell you something about uh, the nanoelectronics industry. It's a vital component of our economic development strategy. Um, you can't say enough about the impact this industry is having uh, across the board on 
the economy. And if you think about the Erie Canal and what has now become a tech corridor, and you think about all the ways that we are now uh, realizing the synergy of our investments, whether it's solar, clean energy in Buffalo, photonics and optics and laser in Rochester. Uh, you have Danfoss here in Utica with silicon power technology. You think about silicon carbide research going on in Albany. This is all what cluster uh, economics is about. You create a cluster, you create a critical mass of research, of students, of businesses, of supply chain, of the workforce pipeline, and that's what we now have really across upstate. And you can see 64% of the Northeast Semiconductor workforce is within 100 miles of the Marcy Nano Center site. So it's significant. You're smack dab in the middle of one of the most robust industries ever known to the planet, period. That is a significant statement, and it should give you a lot of cause for optimism. The state has invested roughly 110 million in the shovel-ready Marcy site, looking to leverage existing universities, advanced manufacturing infrastructure that we have here. And interestingly, um, when the AMS deal, some of you remember AMS from some years ago didn't pan out, we had a decision as to whether it continued to invest in the infrastructure, and I had that conversation with the governor. The AMS deal fell through. We have $100 million in the budget for infrastructure. Should we or shouldn't we continue forward? You have a governor who said in about two seconds of thought, what will it take to get a semiconductor company to Marcy? Will it help or will it hurt? Of course, anything you do to shorten the timeline from the time a company says, yes, I'd like to come to the time they're up and operating helps. He understood immediately that it would be helpful to realize a success like this, and he authorized us to continue to spend money on the infrastructure, although we didn't know exactly at the time which company was going to be occupying that site. So I think that was very prescient, and another great example of the support he's shown this industry. And as I said, we announced uh, in 2015 an agreement that did not work out, um, and that's when the governor invited us to um, get involved, they invited ESD to get involved and to find a replacement for uh, what had happened. Now we did travel around the country. We've come close several times. Uh, we were really close uh, a couple of other times. And many times we said, uh, when asked by the media, when asked by legislators, um, it's not a question of if we will get a semiconductor processor to, to Marcy, it's a question of when will we get them because we have so many advantages here that were so obvious to so many companies. They all came, many of them came and looked, uh, so it was clear it was gonna be uh, just a matter of time. I wanna say that we have an amazing partner uh, throughout this process. Um, Steve DeMeo has done an amazing job. He's been an amazing uh, partner throughout. I wanna say that um, I feel like we could have been successful getting AMS back, as soon as I had heard that they were leaving, we flew out to Austria. I took Steve out with me. Um, if I wasn't so tired by the time I got to the facility in Austria, we may have been successful. <laughs> the, um, the problem is S Steve snored the entire flight <laughs> uh, out to Austria. And that was a problem. And then I couldn't afford a, a state. There was no state rate in Austria for a hotel room. So I had to share a share room again with DeMeo. And uh, he got the couch. Uh, again, a lot of snoring. Um, but in the end, despite snoring Steve DeMeo uh, and despite our inability to get AMS, we really have uh, prevailed uh, in the end. We kept our promise, um, and I couldn't be more excited about the company um, that we are partners with. This is an amazing company, and they are so incredibly aligned with the state's investments and the state's strategy. It's great when you have a partnership that is so perfectly aligned. Cree will invest a billion dollars 
in Oneida County, a billion dollars in Oneida County. I'm gonna say it one more time. <laughs> Billion dollar investments made a big difference in a city the size of Buffalo. In a city the size of Marcy, Utica, Rome, this region, a billion dollars is an enormously impactful investment and we are so excited about that. That is just the best. Um, this is an industry leading semiconductor company focused on a lot of the things that we have focused on, investing in uh, through SUNY, through SUNY Poly, uh, through other businesses along that Canal Corridor, now a tech corridor, silicon carbide, and gallium nitride technology. These are the next generation leading technologies. You're always looking for how do you deliver a chip that delivers uh, more power uh, more efficiently. And that's what these technologies are. You've got really what you're gonna have here is the world class leading production facility for silicon carbide uh, chip technology. So that I think is, uh, more than amazing, truthfully. Uh, they will sign a 49-year lease agreement operating the world's first state-of-the-art 200 millimeter silicon carbide device facility in half a million square feet of space, no small matter. These chips are an efficient and reliable way to reduce power consumption, which is what always you're looking for in the next kind of generation of performance for chips. They align with sectors of the economy, all of which are the fastest growing sectors of the economy which is what is so exciting about this. The energy sector, data centers, energy storage, radar, communications infrastructure, aerospace and defense, these are all amazing industries. The incredible growth of electric vehicles, um, they are supplying uh, companies like Tesla and others, they have a supply agreement with Delphi recently, Inc. This is a rapidly growing, um, company and they're making all the right moves and strategically they keep doubling down on silicon carbide and the semiconductors. The state will invest $500 million in performance-based capital grants and a million dollars in Excelsior job tax credits. We'll match a $5 million investment from Cree for a semiconductor related research partnership with the SUNY system to provide opportunities for students across the SUNY system is extremely exciting. The project will generate over 232 million in new state and local tax revenue and over 4.3 billion in statewide economic impact. You do not have projects. I've been doing this job for almost five years. You do not have projects that have this kind of economic impact. It is extremely rare and it is extremely exciting for this community. And I know how incredibly excited the governor is for this project. And it will create skilled manufacturing and engineering jobs with an average salary of $75,000. An average salary of $75,000. In addition to other local incentives, Mohawk Valley Edge will provide $4.2 million for on-site and off-site off job training and will be reimbursed over a three-year period. Thank you, Steve. The timeline, 2020, will uh, we expect to see um, construction begin at the Marcy site uh, in the spring. 2022 is the scheduled completion of the site and, of course, equipment installation and beginning a ramp-up production. So it's a tight time frame, very tight, and it's made possible by the fact that so much work has been done to the site over the years, again. Cree chose Marcy because the governor's economic strategy has laid the foundation for success. Everywhere you look uh, in Utica, in this region, you see success. And the strategy is having a huge impact, and it's your strategy, which is important the revitalization of downtown, the investments in the workforce, the investments here at SUNY Poly, uh, the addition of tradable sector jobs, manufacturing, distribution, and now semiconductors. That is what has given us a new lease on life. This community has incredible vitality now going on downtown. I've seen the transformation of numerous buildings. You have great 
historic architecture, great fabric. All these buildings are being repurposed for residential, for mixed use. Your festivals, your architecture, the investments in your downtown, growth of the young population, growth of tradable sector jobs, growth of the workforce, investments in innovation like we're making across the canal corridor that plays right into uh, Cree's uh, strength. And this is the latest milestone, really, of many milestones that we've participated in in recent years in the Mohawk Valley's unprecedented resurgence. So I say to you, there has never been a better day, really. This is for real, and this is for life. And this is a game changer, I assure you. This is a game changer for this region. It is an extraordinary opportunity. And this is the beginning of the growth in the semiconductor industry here. The more success begets success in this industry, that whole cluster, all the momentum, the supply chain, the workforce pipeline, the investment, it all begets success. And the more of this we have along the canal corridor, the more we're going to get, and the more you're going to get. So I wanted to um, conclude my presentation. I want to, um, I want to say that, unfortunately, the governor uh, had technical difficulties with the aircraft. Believe me, we have been talking about this day for years. There's no place he would rather be than right here uh, in Marcy, Utica, to be making this announcement. Um, there is no place he'd rather be than right here, right now. It has just been an unbelievable commitment on his part. Um, and I believe we have him on the phone. And with that, I'm going to introduce really the most extraordinary governor uh, this state has had in a very, very long time, Governor Andrew Cuomo. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Howard. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. I am so disappointed that I can't be there today. We went to take off, and the aircraft had a malfunction, and they said it would blow up if we tried to fly, and I didn't want to destroy state property. Otherwise, I'd be there. Uh, first, to Howard Zemsky. Howard took this personally. He literally, as he said, went all over the world, and he brought it home. Howard Zemsky, congratulations to you and the whole ESD team. <laughs> Steve DeMeo and the team at Mohawk Edge, you were fantastic partners, even if you snore. Congratulations. To Greg Lowe and Cree, welcome to the state of New York. We are so excited to have you. And look, just listening uh, to the facts as Howard went through them, this is uh, huge. It is a game train changer, and it is transformational. $1 billion investment, 500,000 square feet of construction, average salary, 75000 And listen to this, over 600 jobs are coming to Marcy. In total, it's going to be a $4 billion economic impact. So it's just uh, unbelievable in its impact. Uh, just two quick points I wanted to make. Uh, one, we have been on the right track and success breeds success. Howard's vision was exactly right, investing in nanotechnology. And we now are one of the leading locations for nanotech in the country and developing that cluster economy in a positive synergy that feeds on itself uh, has been economic magic. Second point is, uh, this says something about our character. It was a gut check. Uh, when, when AMS uh, left us at the altar, 
two years ago, it hurt. And it was a lot of work that went into it and a lot of hope. And then it disappeared. And we swallowed hard. We said we were going to keep going. We invested $110 million in the site. The point of not if, but when. We believed we would get it done. We stuck together. We pulled ourselves up. What do you do when you get knocked on your rear end? You get back up and you fight twice as hard. And that is exactly what we did. Winston Churchill said, never give up, never give up, never give up. Uh, that's the New York way. And that's what made New York, New York. And that's what we did in the Mohawk Valley. And congratulations to everybody in the room for sticking to it and making it happen. Governor, and just... this, my friends, is just building on the momentum that we have going. You look at Utica Hospital, you look at the 300 jobs coming with Dan Falls, you look at the Route 12 reconstruction, the Oriskany Boulevard reconstruction, Nexus, the renovation of the Utica Memorial Auditorium, the Rome winning, the DRI, the growth at Griffith, the drone corridor between Rome and Syracuse, all the arrows are pointed in the right direction, and Cree's coming is really going to jumpstart it all. Congratulations, congratulations, enjoy the day, and let's keep going. God bless you. Governor, thank you for joining us by phone. Thank you for your extraordinary commitment and fortitude and determination on behalf of the Mohawk Valley, uh, Marcy Utica, and the semiconductor industry here. I hope you were able to hear everyone's uh, rousing round of applause, but I know how much everyone here in the room uh, appreciates uh, your extraordinary commitment. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Goodbye. Thank you. I'd now like to introduce Greg Lowe, President, CEO, and Director of Cree. Uh, we could not be more excited to have you joining us here in the Mohawk Valley, Greg. Uh, Greg has a distinguished career spanning decades in the semiconductor industry, including nearly three decades at Texas Instruments. Greg also served as president and CEO of Freescale Semiconductor Limited, a $5 billion company with 17,000 employees and products serving automotive, industrial, consumer, and communications markets. Additionally, Greg also holds board positions with Silicon Labs in Austin, Texas, and the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in Cleveland. Um, Greg is a former member of the band Kiss. <laughs> you don't recognize him because he used to have his face painted. Um, but I hope that you will give a raucous rock and roll welcome to Greg Lowe. <laughs> Well, thank you, everybody, and uh, thanks for all the kind words. Um, I'd like to start off by just acknowledging something Howard said that I think is really important. He said, you know, I've been doing this job for a while. People ask why you do it. You don't get paid a lot of money. You're traveling all over the place. You have a lot of complications and so forth. And he said, um, it's because I have an opportunity to make a difference. And I think that's what everybody wants in their life is an opportunity to make a difference. So. I'd like to just start off by acknowledging Howard and say you really made a difference in this one. Thank you. <laughs> the semiconductor industry has had a profound impact on all of us. Um, most of it has been positive, but it's had a very, very profound impact. It's made cars safer. It's made communication a lot easier. It's made transportation a lot better, you know, and so forth. And the heart of semiconductors for the past five decades, six decades, has been silicon. The whole valley, Silicon Valley, uh, 
um, named after this technology. And when I came to join Cree a couple years ago, um, I was talking to the board about the opportunity, and I said, you know, you have a technology here, the silicon carbide technology has an ability itself to make a tremendous difference on the semiconductor industry. And we're at the early stage of a complete transition from silicon to silicon carbide. And it's a really fascinating time to be in the semiconductor industry because it's very, very rare that this kind of transition ever happens. And we're at the early stage of this. Silicon carbide is a more efficient technology than silicon. It's a more difficult technology to work with, and we over the last 30 years have perfected it. And what it enables is some dramatic improvement. Um, in an electric vehicle, if you use silicon carbide instead of silicon in an electric vehicle, your car will, will go six to 10% further on the same charge. And for any of you that have ever been in an electric vehicle or ever driven one, that's a huge impact. Silicon carbide can also, if a car manufacturer decides they want to keep the range where it is, you can have six to 10% less battery in an electric car. And batteries are the most expensive thing in an electric car, so this is a really big deal. Silicon carbide is used in industrial applications, things like solid state um, circuit breakers, which are significantly more robust than a traditional circuit breaker might be. It's used in telecommunications networks, next generation 5G phones. It's used in solar technology and solar inverters. So many of the technologies that we're enabling are enabling more efficient use of what are ultimately significantly greener technologies that are going to help the planet. And, you know, when people ask me, why do I, why did I choose to, to come to Cree a few years ago, I said the same thing that Howard said, which is, you know, I think there's an ability for us to really make an impact and make a difference. We're really excited to be here in New York, um, here up in the Mohawk Valley. You know, I, I will tell you that um, what you're going to see from us is a tremendous intensity around getting this factory going. We have automotive customers that have designed us in that need us to ramp, so you're gonna see a lot of intensity around that. You're gonna see a lot of intensity about workforce development, the kind of, um, you know, the kind of skills that you need to, for working with our technology, you know, it's taking it up a notch. And so working with the local colleges, and the community colleges, local universities, SUNY, of course, you know, is going to be a really important aspect. One thing I'm a huge fan of is uh, intern programs. We had no intern program two years ago at Cree. Uh, when I joined, we, we kicked one off in the first year. We had 40 interns. This year, we had 125 interns. Next year, we're expecting over 200 interns. These are paid summer internships for college students and technical uh, folks and technicians and so forth that can kind of come and sort of try before you buy. Um, which is always great, but it gives them an opportunity to see what it's like to work in this technical field. And I think it's a really fantastic thing. You'll see us reaching out in the community and engaging with the community, probably in areas like STEM and getting more younger folks interested in science, technology, engineering, and math because it's kind of the heart of what we do. So we'll, you'll see us doing that as well. We're really excited about this opportunity. Um, and what I would tell Howard is uh, as he moves on, uh, just remember, our average salary is $75,000 a year, so there's plenty of opportunity to apply if you'd like to. <laughs> um, we might need to have them take a course or two, but, uh, but there's plenty of opportunity. It is an exciting time to be in this industry. You know, I've, I've mentioned to, to a lot of folks that we've got, you know, well, actually Howard mentioned earlier that, you know, the, the technologies and the industries that our technology goes into are high growth industries electric vehicles as, as an example that I talked about. Uh, Volkswagen has announced that over the next decade they're going to introduce 70, 70 new electric vehicles to the market. They've also announced that in 2024 they will bring to market their very last new car that has an internal combustion engine that is the primary driver. 2025 and beyond, everything will either be an electric vehicle 
or a hybrid of some sort. That's going to make the world a better place. It's going to give tremendous opportunity for us at Cree, and I think it's going to be a tremendous opportunity here in the Mohawk Valley. So with that, I just want to thank you for the warm welcome. I've heard a lot of great things about this area. I've heard about the beer. <laughs> I've heard about the rye. And uh, what I would tell you is our team actually told me about the biscuits and gravy. Apparently, they're pretty good here, too. So we're really, really excited about that. Um, so you'll see us around, and we're really looking forward to engaging with all of you. Thank you very much for this tremendous opportunity, and we look forward to a great future. Thank you, everybody. <laughs>